will have all of the major deployments done. But then we need to uh, turn 18 individual mirrors into one common optical surface. Uh, this is called phasing the mirror. And that actually will take three months. It's a three month long process. So when we, uh, when we get all of the deployments done and we've moved the, the mirrors off of their kind of stowed configuration, We'll point the telescope at a, at a bright star. And um, once it's cooled down enough that we can turn on the, the near-infrared camera, one of the main imaging cameras, we'll take a picture. And we will see 18 out-of-focus images of that bright star. Uh, so we then start to move each of the 18 mirror segments so that they line up together, so they're all pointed at the same place. And then we have to measure the, the phase or the, the, whether the, the light that's hitting the mirror is being reflected back with the same wavelengths um, as the other mirror segments. That's a very long, complicated process of measuring um, whether, the, whether the light's all, all phased up. Uh, it's also an iterative process, so we'll go through it, we'll get a pretty good picture image, then we'll undo it and redo it again. And then we'll start, once we got it perfect in one place in the field of view, one part of the, the picture, we will then extend that to the rest of that camera, the near infrared camera. And once we can turn on the other th three cameras, we'll make sure that they are phased up in focus as well. So that takes us to about four months after launch. Um, and then we need to check out all of the instruments. There are four scientific instruments. Uh, I've mentioned the near-infrared camera. Uh, we have a near-infrared spectrograph. A spectrograph, uh, as, as somebody puts it, it puts the fizz in astrophysics, going from astronomy pictures to astrophysics of really understanding what we're looking at. Um, so the spectrograph breaks up the light and you can see the components, um, the, the el chemical elements that make up what you're looking at. It also allows us to measure um, velocities through the, the Doppler shift. Uh, so that's the near-infrared spectrograph. And that's actually a contribution from the European Space Agency. Um, we also have the uh, mid-infrared instrument, which is the longest wavelengths that Webb can see. Uh, that's, a, that's a camera that does both imaging and spectroscopy and will be very powerful at studying the formation of stars and planetary systems within our own galaxy. And then finally, the fourth instrument was provided by the Canadian Space Agency, and that's a specialized camera designed to study a particular kind of extrasolar planet or, or extra exoplanet, um, as well as doing some, uh, again, some specialized things with uh, planetary dust disks and uh, distant galaxies.